All right, fantastic. Um, well, thank you everyone for attending. And um, I want to um, uh, apologize first and foremost to anybody that attended one of my previous sessions. Um, I wasn't really sure what to prepare for this that was different from uh, the prior sessions. So I'm gonna go over some of the same material, but hopefully you have some new questions for me about the internships that we have at 22nd Century Technologies. So let me just go ahead and skip forward. Um, I've been with 22nd Century now for almost three years. Um, I've been in project management and leadership for 25 years. I've spent 15 years of that in enterprise software and business intelligence, uh, 15 years in facilities management. I've spent more than 20 years in business development, and um, I have 10 years of experience as a subject matter experts on enterprise resource planning. Um, I've also spent about 10 years in the DOD sector, um, helping out various companies with uh, management of federal programs. And I currently oversee more than nine programs with more than 150 employees. So uh, 22nd Century was founded in 1997 in response to the Y2K bug. If any of you are familiar with that, it was a big IT push right around the year 2000. Um, uh, most of our revenue comes from federal contracts uh, with about 60% of our revenue coming from federal contracts and about 40% coming from state and local. Uh, we have more than 5,200 employees. And in fact, we've more than doubled in size in the two year, or excuse me, three years that I've been with the company. And about 20% of our employees hold a DOD security clearance of some type. We do have, as a company, a top secret facility clearance, which allows us to support classified contracts. And um, uh, those classified contracts uh, incorporate those 20%, that 20% of our workforce that I mentioned earlier. Uh, one of the things that we're really proud of is our status uh, by Forbes as one of the best places to work. That is a rating that was given to us by our employees in many cases because of the opportunities that we provide them to move up within the company. Uh, we're located in all 50 states um, and um, uh, are doing more than 350 million a year in gross revenue. So uh, our mission is to provide the right solutions at the right time and at the right price. Um, to do this, we are a full service consulting and staffing firm, which essentially means that we rent people. So we might hire you for $40,000 a year or $100,000 a year, and we would uh, charge a premium on your time that would then be charged to the government. So if we charged $100,000 for your time, we might be charging the government $150,000. And that difference uh, covers all of uh, our corporate costs, um, the cost of your benefits, the cost of uh, providing leadership um, and guidance, so on and so forth. And um, we then provide our customers with the skills knowledge and staff needed to succeed wherever their mission requires them. So uh, if OSHA, for example, needs a team of programmers to deliver uh, on software that is used by uh, OSHA um, reporting companies around the US, we would provide the staff to go ahead and support that software. So uh, one of the questions that we know that we were asked, especially in regards to the internships, is what types of education are needed? So 
when we're hiring someone off the street, we are definitely looking at whether or not they have a four-year degree, uh, whether or not they have a postgraduate degree of some type. But um, very specifically, we are looking for micro certifications, uh, including the CompTIA certifications. And this is particularly true on our DOD contracts, where the government is particularly interested in the CompTIA A plus or Network Plus and the CompTIA Security Plus. The reason that those are required is that if you're going to have administrative rights over someone else's computer in the DOD environment, you need to have that Security Plus certificate. Um, so any of those micro certifications which you can get really help in terms of um, uh, helping us find you. And they also create the keywords that lo we're looking for on your resume. Um, so what types of jobs do we have and what type of salaries do we hire at? We really hire the whole spectrum of jobs, everything from um, entry-level office workers and IT personnel to help desk people, um, to systems engineers and uh, software engineers. Uh, we hire cloud engineers all the time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have to interview later today for a senior database analyst. Um, and we pay salaries anywhere from 35000 a year up to $200,000 a year and more, depending on what types of qualifications the applicant brings to the job. So I'm going to focus on um, the internships that we have at um, 22nd Century Technologies. Our internships are a little different from an internship that you might be used to at some of the other companies that um, you're talking to in today's sessions. A lot of those internships, they're going to partner you with someone um, for the length of the internship you'll get taskings and assignments from them. You'll produce some type of work product. Um, and at the end of it, you may uh, be able to say, hey, I did a lot of software development or I did a lot of cybersecurity. What we're doing instead is we're giving you a 360 degree view of the entirety of our company, um, including what types of... Um, uh, information are necessary for you to start a business like 22nd Century. We are ready and willing to teach you how to become our competition or more preferably how to become one of our partner businesses because we routinely partner with small businesses where the small business has the small business credentials necessary to win a specific contract and then we bring the experience, the expertise, and the um, personnel necessary to go ahead and actually deliver on that contract. So in order to give you a 360-degree view of uh, all of the company, we start with what is the hiring process and what is the onboarding process. We actually take a look in the mirror and examine how did we select the people that uh, made it through the internship program and why were they selected over other people that had been applying? And we hope that this helps you to understand how to make it through the hiring process as well. Um, we also talk about what our onboarding process is and how we get somebody ready to work and ready to charge time on a federal contract. Then we talk about um, management and contracts. So this is how we manage the day-to-day -day activities, um, including human resources, and how we manage federal, state, and local contracts. Uh, and during this session, we actually have you meeting with our legal team. So on each of these days, you're meeting with different experts in different areas of the business and they are actually providing you with an overview of their specialty. 
So on day three, we focus on business requirements. This is how to take the instructions from the customer, usually in the form of a statement of work, and how to translate that into the work that needs to actually be done on the contract. Um, because quite often, uh, a software developer isn't necessarily a contract specialist and doesn't necessarily understand the jargon that's written into the contract. So we may need somebody to translate that into hard requirements that they can develop software for. Um, then we'll spend a day on software development and we'll do something called pseudo coding, which is a uh, very high level coding where you're not relying on any one specific language, but you're putting together code in natural English um, so that everybody can understand and be on one page of the work that's going to be done. That also then dovetails nicely into testing and deployment because that pseudocode is often used to tell the testers how the system is supposed to work and what they're going to test against. The testers are also making sure that the system can go ahead and function in the customer's environment without creating uh, major conflicts and shutting the system down the way that you saw when Facebook had their big outage the other day. Um, and then we get into deployment which is the practice of rolling out that code without shutting down the entire system as Facebook did. Um, we then spend a day on cybersecurity, and this is both um, cybersecurity focused on the uh, software that we're developing and also cybersecurity on our enterprise, how we can make sure that our enterprise itself is not hacked. Um, and we can make sure that we're not the victims of phishing or ransomware. Um, we then move on to business development and proposal writing. This is essential because we actually will teach you a quick introduction to how to search for federal contracts and how to find a contract that your small business is suited for, and then how to work with our proposal team to create a winning bid that can actually win the contract and bring the business in the door to you. And then finally, we spend a day on business strategy where you get to talk to the CEO of the company and ask him questions directly. And he shares with you how he directs the overall business and what it's like to start a small business and then grow it to a $350 million a year business. So that's the overview of what we provide in our uh, internship program. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to questions because I do want this session to be more about you and about your internship experience. So what I would like, if you could, is to please um, uh, go ahead and, oh, I don't see, I don't see the chat window here. Oh, here we are. Uh, good. I found the chat window. Whoo, I'm an IT guy. Um, so anyway, uh, if you could go ahead and uh, submit a question to the chat log. Um, or if uh, people aren't uh, talking over themselves too much, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. So the first question um, that was submitted is, what code do you use for your software? I believe you were asking, what language do we use? And the short answer is, we use all of them. Um, we typically use uh, Java and Python, but we have different contracts which require the use of C Sharp or even C++. We even have some uh, programs where we're programming in COBOL, which is something that I was trained on 20 years ago. Um, it really depends on the nature of the work that needs to be done and what the needs of the customer are, whether they need something that's written brand new or they need the sustainment of older existing code, and they just need that brought up with current technology. 
The next question that I see is, is there, is this internship more tailored to rising seniors or anyone in high school? It's open towards anyone in high school. We do show preference towards rising seniors um, because we do recognize that many rising seniors want that entrepreneurship experience that we are providing. Um, but it is certainly open to anyone, and we will consider your resume regardless of what grade level you're at. Um, it said, do these internships only last eight days? Or are those just the eight steps of the internships? So um, the internship for the spring is set up around 25 contact hours. And we divided that 25 contact hours into eight three-hour sessions. Um, each of those sessions was led by one of our experts. And that way you get three hours of exposure to one of our experts um, in each of those days. And we then rotate through, and then you have uh, some additional time to go ahead and complete the project, which is assigned to you. Um, the next question that I see is, how do we apply? So last time with the spring session, everyone applied through Miss Christina. I don't know if we're going to use exactly the same system of applying through her or if they're going to change the system. So stay tuned for further information. Um, the next question is, what kinds of impacts do interns make after leaving your internship specifically? Basically, what are the benefits of your internship specifically? Well, um, that's a good question. I would say it's one of two things. We're going to either help you to be a better employee at a company like 22nd Century, or we're going to help you become an entrepreneur, or both. Um, because you may know that you want to be an entrepreneur eventually, but you may want to get that experience of working in a larger company uh, or even in a small business first before you break out on your own. And either way, you're going to have some of that uh, exposure with the 22nd century internships. Um, there was a question about what age can you apply or high school level? Again, we show preference to rising seniors and rising juniors um, simply because um, we know that they benefit the most from the entrepreneurship section, um, but really anybody can apply. Um, and it said, uh, even if you know nothing about the IT experience and also know nothing about computers, can we still apply for internships? The short answer is yes. As a matter of fact, we're looking for people that are social media experts for the summer session. Um, if you have expertise in social media, we are definitely interested in you because we're still learning social media. So you probably have more experience than we do on Instagram um, or on WhatsApp. And we would be very interested in learning from you on how we could promote ourselves on those platforms. Um, will we deal with machine learning? We'll touch on machine learning. Um, it is definitely an aspect of the software development that we do. And it's a big part of uh, what we'll cover during our summer internships. The summer internships are 125 contact hours as opposed to just the 25 contact hours in the spring internships. Um, so during that longer internship, we have the time and the grace to go ahead and dig into a topic like machine learning. We simply don't have that luxury in the shorter internship. Uh, are there prerequisites in order to apply? Yes. Uh, you need to have a good looking resume and you need to interview one-on-one uh, -on -one with myself and possibly with one of our experts. Um, but those are really the only prerequisites. However, if you have a certification of any kind, I absolutely want to know about it and I'd like to see it on your resume. We definitely showed some preference to students that had A plus or security plus certificates already 
uh, or we're in the process of studying for those. And um, yes, we are planning to do both spring and summer internships. Um, we're still figuring out what the coursework will be for the summer internship uh, because we haven't done that before. Um, that's really what held us back from doing one this summer. We're also hoping to do these internships in person if the school system um, is ready for that. But we are set up and capable of doing them virtually if that's what's required. So those are some good questions. I appreciate it. I'd now like to open it up to the floor for some more questions. And I'm going to have a drink of water. Because I've been talking too much. What other questions can I answer for you? Because really, this is about making sure that you guys have the right kind of internship experience. Um, one thing that I'll add is, um, again, during the summer internship process, we are expecting to break the team into different groups. So we'll probably spend the first 25 of the total 125 contact hours going over the 360 degree experience. And then the remaining 100 contact hours will be divided out into teams, which include software development, social media, um, uh, cybersecurity, and we may do something on machine learning. Um, one of the questions was, in terms of more technical aspects, how much do interns tend to get out of the experience? I will frankly admit that because we are focused on the high level and focused on the business as a whole, we are not getting as technical in this internship as you may in some others, but that also means that you should get more um, from an entrepreneurship standpoint and you should learn more about how to start your own business uh, as opposed to an internship that just focuses on coding or on um, cybersecurity skills. Uh, what are you looking for in an interview? Uh, I'm looking for the same thing that I'm looking for in a resume, which is to understand why you are different and what is special about you. I want to make sure that um, with all of these, we allow you to uh, put your best foot forward, but we really want to reserve these internships for people that are very focused on entrepreneurship or are very focused on working their way up in an organization like 22nd Century um, and are interested in getting in on the ground floor um, and then proving to us that they should advance to a level up to mine or even above. Um, how would you describe the work environment here at the company? Um, that's a good question. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous session, Probably only about 10% of our staff is in our back office headquarters. Most of our staff, more than 90%, is actually out in the field embedded with our customers. And what that means is that we have to trust you to go out in the field to interact with our customers and to be professional at all times. Um, and this is one of the things that we look for in the interview process that we go through when we interview for the jobs is can you present yourself professionally? Can you represent the company and act on our behalf at all times? Because that's really what we need um, with any of our field personnel. And like I said, that's 90% of our workforce. Um, we do sometimes hire more junior people uh, into our um, corporate offices to give them that opportunity to grow. Um, but we don't have as much work in the corporate offices as we do out in the field. So we're looking to put people out in the field just as soon as we can. 
I hope that answers the question. What other questions are out there? Um, oh, no, that's the same question that we had before. Yeah, what insight can you give about day-to-day -day work life at 22nd Century? Um, so uh, it really depends. It depends on the whether you're assigned to the corporate office or if you're assigned to a contract. If you're assigned to a contract, there's going to be a program manager that you're going to report to on a day-to-day -day basis. That program manager is going to come up with taskings for you, um, and they're going to assign those tasks to you and expect you to go ahead and complete them or to provide an explanation why um, uh, you're having difficulty in completing that assignment. Um, if you're assigned to our corporate office, things are a little more fluid. Uh, you may be assigned to our proposal writing team, uh, which is helping to write these proposals um, that we are uh, using to pursue the work that we bid on day after day, or you may be assigned to the management team, in which case you would be answering emails and overseeing uh, a variety of different contracts the way that I do. So I answer email all day long, um, and uh, I try to deal with HR questions all day long. Uh, HR is a big function of what I do um, because people want to know what happens to me when I retire. What happens to me if I leave the company? Um, how can I get promoted? Uh, when can I get a salary increase and so on? And those are all uh, questions that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, uh, the question is asked, are alum preferred? Um, we haven't had the opportunity yet to work with alumni. Uh, we certainly would welcome that opportunity. There was one that was selected for our last round of internships, but they declined in order to take another summer uh, internship opportunity with the college that they were attending. And we certainly understand and support that interest. Um, for that reason, we had an alternative already selected, and we simply went with our alternative to that person. What other questions are out there? Oh, the final assignment um, that we have, as I mentioned, we need help with our social media presence. Um, the final assignment is to do a five minute YouTube video that describes what it's it like to work at 22nd Century. And we figure that if we've explained to you what it's like, um, uh, then you should be able to repeat that back to us in that five-minute video. So it's a relatively simple assignment, but it's something that I saw uh, the interns put several hours worth of effort into in order to make sure that they were putting their best foot forward. And that's really the type of effort that we are looking for in these final assignments. Uh, the question was asked, what type of projects do you bid for? We typically bid on projects or programs that are worth anywhere from $5 million a year to $200 million a year. Um, these are projects or programs where uh, the government needs somebody to come in that has the expertise already to do something that they themselves don't have the expertise to support. And we come in with our team of employees and then go ahead and fulfill that project or program. I hope that answers your question. It's a, it's a little nebulous, but it really depends on what the customer wants. All right, it is 2.11 on my end. I'm going to drop in the chat an internship interest form from Ms. Christina Lee. And at this time, we are going to stop the recording because we are going to get ready to continue on with the rest of our afternoon. Fair.